Okay, strap yourselves in for this. It's uh, going to be 25 minutes of double tier PKI goodness. We're going to have a standalone root CA, an enterprise subordinate CA, and a IIS, a WWW server serving up the uh, CRL and the OCSP function. We're going to start building out some uh, OUs, groups in Active Directory. Basically, just make a computer's OU and a group's OU. Move the computer objects to the computer's OU so group, group policy can apply to them. And we're going to create a group called OCSP Servers. We're going to add a, a Tucson WW1 to that group to apply permissions to the OCSP certificate template. We'll demonstrate all that in a bit creating a test user not really going to use it in this scenario but we have one anyway so there you see the computers are moved to the correct container there's our security group with the members are applied so make sure to restart a server when you add it to a group otherwise it doesn't accrue that group membership so here we are rebooting Tucson WWW1 let's take a look at what else we did we created a split brain DNS zone for aaco.com which would uh, be used to publish the PKI uh, CDP and OCSP URL externally so you see that there aaco.com with the PKI uh, DNS entry and then there's aaco.local our internal DNS zone which would not be published externally and that obviously contains the registrations of our uh, hosts in uh, the domain. Okay, it looks like we're going to build out our root CA right now. Start out with the CA policy inf file in the C Windows folder. There's some settings in there that you may not be able to modify after you install the role. Installing the role. Tried to crop out some of the paint drying scenes and still leave some sense of realism so this progress indicator is moving much faster than it did in real life. Okay, establishing the root CA and now we're going to set up the uh, CDP points and some additional uh, certificate validity for the issuing CA etc. And of course you gotta make sure you restart the service after you apply all those settings. Not quite sure why I waited so long here. I'm just checking that the service has started. So now we can issue our uh, certificate revocation list. And we're going to open the uh, certain role folder so that we can copy those certificates to uh, the WWW server and the issuing CA. And we're also going to publish that via group policy in Active Directory so that every machine in the domain will trust the root CA certificate. Okay, so it looks like we're working on the IIS server WWW1, uh, installing the roles. Now while we watch this progress indicator, a simple reminder to like, subscribe, and share on my YouTube channel figure I'll get a plug in there while we have some dead time
We're also going to create a shared folder on the F drive for www1. What's going to be interesting about this, it's going to be shared to the certificate uh, publishers group in the domain, which is going to enable uh, Tucson ICA1, the issuing CA, to uh, automatically update the CRL file there. We won't have to copy it over uh, when it updates. It'll just copy to the share automatically. And you'll see that in the script for ICA1 that we actually have a uh, URL added for the file share on Tucson www one Okay, so we're creating a virtual directory PKI pointing to the FPKI folder. This is where the uh, CRL and the AIA uh, items will be uh, presented. Okay, we're enabling directory browsing on the PKI virtual directory. And as request filtering, we're allowing double escaping. This is all detailed in the documents that I'll link to uh, in the description of the video. Let's see what's next. Looks like we complete uh, setup of the root and uh, issuing CA. And then we'll come back and set up OCSP on the uh, www1. So here I'm going to copy the root certificates and the root certificate uh, revocation list. I can put it on the domain controller so I can import it in, into group policy. Looks like that's where we're headed next. All right, we're just going to apply it to the uh, default domain policy at the root. So every machine in the domain will have this applied. Policies, Windows settings, security settings, public key policies, trusted root certificates. Trusted root certificate authorities. Now we just import that certificate. And remember, Tucson RCA1 is a standalone root uh, certificate authority. Uh, it's not domain joined uh, and it should be isolated from the network. All of these uh, copying of the files etc. should be done uh, outside of the network uh, for security purposes. You must isolate the uh, root CA. Okay, here I am copying those same uh, root CA and CRL to WW1 in that uh, FPKI folder. All right, time to build out our issuing CA. We're moving pretty quick, but we're just uh, passing, you know, we're about a third of the way into the video. So hang on, you're going to see some exciting stuff at the end. You know, I saved some really good stuff for the end there, like how to test OCSP and uh, setting up your web enrollment, which seems to be see a lot of people googling hey my web enrollment isn't set up and uh, was an interesting <laughs> interestingly simple problem okay here I'm just demonstrating that by applying the group policy GP update force I'll show you that the root certificate is in the trusted uh, root certificate authorities folder so you see AACO root CA, and that would be the case for all the other machines as group policy applies to them. Okay, so again, we're starting out with the CA policy int file uh, and building out the uh, issuing CA service. Installing the role. Again, a reminder to watch these through the YouTube channel and feel free to comment if you want to see something else other than PKI. I'm sure I'm going to have other things in there, but I'm happy to take requests, etc.
Okay, so you have to finish off by taking the certificate request for the issuing server and presenting it to the root CA and issuing the issuing CA certificate. So that's what we're about to do here. You use the certificate authority console to uh, input the request. So we just pointed at the request file. Then we authorize the request. Collect the issuing CA certificate. Just going to copy it to a file. Selecting that file and taking it back to the Tucson ICA1. Now here I'm really not going to start the certificate authority uh, at this point because there's still some other settings we're going to apply at the, at the issuing CA level. We're still going to add the CDP uh, and the OCSP information. So the CRL URL, the AIA URL, and the OCSP URL are going to be added. So I didn't want to start the uh, certificate authority. You see it's paused there. It's got the little uh, black square on the service still. Okay, so we're going to finish applying these settings. Again, this is a validity period for the issued certificates. Uh, the certificate revocation list renewal period, etc. And again, the URLs for the CDP and OCSP. Restarting the service to make those effective. Making sure that service is started. So now we can use the cert util command to issue the CRL, cert util CRL. We'll open Windows Explorer to that certain role folder so that we can copy the issuing CA certificate and certificate revocation lists. There's also a, a Delta CRL here. Now, when you look in this, look carefully, you'll see AACO CA is already there. The certificate revocation list and the Delta CRL are both already there by virtue of the fact that cert util uh, dash CRL copies it to that share automatically. If you look carefully in the scripts that we just ran, you'll see that there. Okay, so I'm going to open uh, PKI view MSC. I don't know why that isn't on the start menu. You have to uh, create a link to it for some reason. And this lets you view the health of your overall uh, PKI environment. So you see the root CA and it has its certificates good, AIA is good, certificate revocation, the CDP point is good. On the issuing CA, OCSP is still red, needs to be set up. Hang on, we're over halfway to the end now. Funny, I didn't start the uh, <laughs> certificate authority service until just now even though I was able to uh, perform all those functions including uh, issuing the CRL the uh, looked like it hadn't started or something maybe I just needed to refresh the console okay so here I'm going to copy the OCSP response signing certificate always copy your certificates don't modify the originals and so I'm going to name it echo OCSP response signing and then in security I'm going to add the OCSP servers group and give them the enroll and auto enroll permission you could have more than one OCSP server and they can act as an array and they can obtain the certificate on their own once they're established 
The OCSP function, think of it as a certificate revocation list that's catched on the server and the server looks up on the list rather than downloading the whole certificate revocation list if it's 5 megs, 10 megs, however big it grows. Each check of the certificate revocation list is a download of the CRL whereas this enables you, OCSP enables a catched lookup. The server holds the list and responds to client requests by looking up. Is my certificate still good? Yes it is. Okay, so we're uh, creating that uh, revocation configuration. See we automatically found the uh, certificate server. That's good. And it's going to give us a certificate. We're configuring the OCSP service. It says it's working. Array configuration. And again here you can act as an array. So it can have an array master. And the array master, if you apply these firewall rules I'm about to show you to all of your array members, then uh, you can copy the settings from the array master to the other servers and they'll automatically become OCSP servers and get set up appropriately. Quite nice if you have a bunch of them. There we go, a couple of uh, OCSP related firewall rules. Not really needed in this case because we just have the one server but I wanted to demonstrate that anyway. Okay, let's check our health. We should see that OCSP go to from red to green. Refreshing and that red just won't go away. Now there's some additional troubleshooting steps that I've taken in the past where you actually uh, revoke the issuing CA's exchange certificate. You see it down here, I'm kind of hinting at it. Cert Util CA Info Exchange. So if you revoke that certificate, issue a new CRL on the root CA, copy the CRLs, then on the <laughs> issuing CA, run that uh, cert util CA info dash exchange. Then, then that in the past has fixed my uh, OCSP being read. But in this case, I'm just restarting IIS. And uh, I think we're going to luck out this time. I only know that because this is about my fifth or sixth time through the video. So I know how it ends. And another refresh. And no red lights. That's always good news. That's what we kind of try to do here. Okay, we're two-thirds of the way through the video. We're going to complete the web enrollment setup on the ICA server. We'll need a, basically an SSL cert for uh, HTTPS. Now this one, I'm going to issue the subject name. is going to be based on the uh, DNS name of the machine so that you can just request it through the uh, certificate console on a client machine. I'm going to create another web certificate, uh, web server certificate that's going to be one where you have to specify the subject name because it won't appear in the web enrollment uh, interface if the uh, subject name is defined already. Uh, double checking my stuff that time. Creating that second one that I was talking about and watch what I do on the subject tab. I leave it alone. So I'm going to call this one manual. A echo web server manual so that you can manually request it and fill in the appropriate uh, uh, fill in the appropriate information for the certificate. It just will not appear in the web enrollment um, web interface if it's configured <laughs> to fill in the subject name by default. Okay, so all right, we're uh, issuing those. Uh, certificate templates so that we can find them and, and request them or enroll in them, etc. So to finish the 
ADCS web enrollment page, you just need to go here and finish the installation. So it, we still had an outstanding task here. Okay, only five minutes left. You guys are doing great if you've made it this far. So I'm going to request a certificate for the server. And this is a Tucson ICA one. It has the web enrollment uh, role installed along with the issuing CA role. You can see I can just select that and it, all of the information will be filled in because the subject name is going to default to the DNS uh, name of the server. So there's my certificate that I can use for the web enrollment and that is cert HTTPS server name slash cert serve. Uh, you may be familiar with that in the past. So I'm in IIS. We've got to do a binding to HTTPS with the certificate name. And I want the server name to match the named server and the certificate, the subject name of the certificate. Yeah, make sure to uh, answer the phone and uh, restart the IIS service. There we go, that's great. Gonna have to build a studio out <laughs> somewhere in the house that's not where dogs and phones are. Okay, so we can see uh, we've got our web enrollment uh, website opened up. Yeah, you can't issue a certificate from HTTP. You have to make it HTTPS, which is why we went through this step here, show you everything you need to know about that in case you had questions on that topic. Just remember to finish installing the role switch it to HTTPS, assign a certificate, make sure the names match so that you don't have a certificate mismatch error in the web. Okay, so now I'm going to just save out Tucson ICA, that certificate that was assigned to the machine. I'm going to save it out to the desktop because I'm going to demonstrate how to test the OCSP uh, functionality. And that is by using the cert util command. Yeah, I'm just showing the desktop, so I can show you I exported that certificate out to uh, the desktop there. It's certutil-url, and then we're going to type in the URL, uh, which is http colon whack whack pki aaco.com slash ocsp. And that actually opens this handy little interface for testing. Uh, you can test the CDP the CRL, the AIA, and OCSP, and I think I'm going to demonstrate all of those right now. So I'm going to, so you can see the URL is already there from the command, and now I'm just going to select that certificate I saved out to the desktop. Choose OCSP for the test, and let's check it. And you see we do get a verified, so it's verified. And just for kicks, I'm going to verify the AIA. There it is. Hang on, just 30 seconds left. I hope we can make it. So again, I hope you got to see some things that, that you haven't seen before. Um, just wanted to uh, finish off showing the two-tier PKI setup, which would be recommended. I did that whole video series with the Cross Forest PKI and enrollment, and I had all of the... Uh, PKI roles on the same server, which is not recommended. But as you can see here, we got it all broken out. 
and got it set up and all the lights are green thanks again oh by the way here's the articles that uh, all of this was based on and i'll link to those in the uh, comments thank you